it's been like it's been like 10 days since i've even edited a video turned on the camera done anything youtube related and there's a reason for that L there is a complete utter reason for that being an adult sucks so much happening to work endless hours go from day to night to day to night just to get your daily job done it's so frustrating we are going to be watching the transformers one official trailer i didn't know this was coming out I, I guess i did see something on instagram or something like at middle of the night when i was just like half dead you know so it came out a couple days ago so I'm, I'm late to the party but it's okay because we can still watch it and we can still react to it and it's everything's fine and you guys get new content hey guys it's professor prime here at miserplanet.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the transformers one official teaser trailer or is this a trailer because it's like three it's almost three and a half minutes long so i don't know guys but let's uh let's check it out uh we're gonna watch the trailer and then i will give you my thoughts afterwards and we will do some more stuff now just full disclosure i have been spoiled on a couple of things i have seen steel images already of the animation i'll talk about that i've also seen leak images of the studio series optimus prime i believe optimus prime and i also got something else that i heard but i'll talk about that after we watch the trailer so let's just watch it hey what is up transformers fans well this is it brian our trailer is about to drop oh man i can't wait i can't wait either oh yeah then let's drop it here it comes it's from the okay. eternals okay. right the transformers, transformers one trailer, trailer starts now <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's good i like that i like it too the transformers one trailer starts now so, how long so we got, do you think we'll be here? I was D D26? You know what? We oh, D16. So Thought you weren't talking to me. You two, come with me. Oh, hey! Okay. Report to waste management. Hi there, I'm B127. Oh. I'm actually oh. working on some nicknames. The, I was the gonna say Bumblebee. Right um, Badassatron, which is actually pronounced Badassatron. Badassatron. Yeah. Um, we're gonna That's funny. Me. That's funny. Oh wow, look at that. Lowly worker bots who can't even transform. Is that I guess it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll talk about it. Oh. There's a reason no one goes to the surface. D16, okay, that's what I thought. It's dangerous. Why'd you bring jetpacks? If we survive this, I'm oh. gonna kill you! I accept those terms. <laughs> I, I like that. Is that Alita 1? That is Alita 1. It's beautiful. Are those deer? Huh. You have proven yourself worthy. Take these. Oh, Alpha Tryon, okay. Your full potential. Oh, uh, oh, oh, every time Octopus Prime now? Oh no, he's getting oh oh the fusion cannon. Oh no, that meets the eye. My God. <laughs> oh, he's not fully. He's not Optimus yet. Oh, that's cool. Where's my head? How do we use these things? Straight from the Bumblebee movie. Uh, guys, that's not good. The Quintessons? We've got these powers for a reason. Let's use them. They got the transformation sound in there. I like it. We stand here together. Were those Seekers? As one. Our Black Iraq. Whoa, whoa, whoa! 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 I got a battle mask! It appeared with what? not the bad guy why did you cut the door Wait, no it was already like that right yeah that's, that's right, right. Yeah. it was yeah, yeah it was already mm -hmm. like yeah that's hmm. right. oh boy guys wow there is so so much to unpack here 
I'm gonna keep it brief though, because I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do a deep dive trailer, deep dive video on this trailer later, sometime this week. We'll figure it out. Uh, first of all, I love how they've done the dynamic between uh, Megatron D16 and Orion Pax, aka Octopus Prime. The the friendship. I I love how they're they're like. For those of you that like in the original G1 cartoon. They never really emphasize on Optimus and Megatron's relationship in terms of like where they. I mean, I think it, it was touched upon. I think in the later seasons, like I want to say, like in the Japanese continuity, I think it was touched upon that Optimus Prime was was originally Orion Pax, and I, I think Megatron. I think originally uh, Orion Pax was like a like like basically a librarian, basically, and, and Megatron, aka D sixteen, was a uh, was a gladiator. Which they've kind of kept for the most part throughout all your friend Transformer lore when Megatron talks about his past, that he was a gladiator in the pits. And usually the gladiator in the pits were like the worker bots and stuff like that. They were being held, they're being controlled by the by the elite. Uh and that's and then it's kinda of like kinda of like what it was like Optimus was like, Hey, we should like we should rise up against like the elitist rich people, but do it peacefully. Where Megatron also wanted to do that, but he wanted to do it violently. And Optimus and Megatron did that's where they didn't agree on how to rise up against the elitists in the Transformer society. And their war destroyed what was Cybertron. And that's how the whole thing started. So it's basically it's basically like thinking of it this way. Thinking of like think think of think like if uh the Rebel Alliance, like they rise against the Empire, right? But let's say Luke Skywalker and Leia Skywalker have a disagreement on how they should go about it. And they, between each other, split into two factions and have a war with themselves. And the, the and their war becomes so large, it eradicates the Empire, which they were trying to dis trying to dissolve in the first place. So it's, that's kind of the, the best analogy I can give for it. So here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts. So it looks like... It looks like for the majority of the movie, uh, it'll be a riot. I think like uh, I here's how I think the movie's gonna play out, guys. The first act is gonna be very lighthearted, very childish. It's gonna be like uh, Orion. I keep saying Octopus, Orion Pax, and D sixteen, and like their friendship and building their friendship. They're gonna meet uh, B one twenty twenty six. Yeah, B one twenty six, which is a nod from the movie movies. So I think I, I've heard rumors of this movie. Is basically can be a continuity origin to anything Transformers. Like you could take what happens in this film and connect it to the Michael Bay films later down the road, or you can connect it to the Bumblebee movie, which I think is I think is a soft reboot. And then Rise of the Boo Rise of the Beast is even a little bit of a softer reboot because of a little bit of it took a little bit of liberty with some changes. So it could be a continuity that it could be a continuity of Transformers Prime. Or War for Cybertron they did on Netflix, or 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 Earthspark, or uh, any base G one basically anything Transformer related. They this can be like a can be put in as the origin story, which I think is cool. Even though there are some liberties because like War for Cybertron storyline, they actually did dive a little bit into like especially Megatron's. Uh, now who knows they might have Megatron fight in in the pit or something. They might actually. They might actually do that. I, I don't know. Because we don't we haven't seen that yet. But we also got Alita, Alita One, and for those of you who don't know this, in in the continuity of Transformers lore, Alita One was essentially a Ryan Pax's um life partner. Okay, I don't want to say girlfriend because Transformers don't have genders. Okay? Let's just I I, I get it. I get it. They design RC Chromia with the emphasis that they have boobs. We get it. We've got a lot of Fembot toys that I enjoy myself that have huge ass knockers on them. But let's just the elephant in the room, Transformers do not have genders. They are just they are genderless creatures. They are just they're they don't apply to the same as we do. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. So, but I don't I I brought that up because I don't know if this version of Alita 1 is going to be a life partner to Orion Pax. She might later on after everything happens. Now, and then you got B-123, uh, B-126 in here. 
you got Alpha Trion in here. Now, for those of you who don't know, in some continuities of Transformers, like I think the IDW, and I know they did it in the War for Cybertron as well, Alpha Trion actually had three disciples. It was Ultra Magnus, and uh, Orion Pax, and uh, Megatron, or D D6, D16, or Megatron too. Sometimes he was just Megatron. And to see, and he was he was the leader of the Transformers. He was the leader, okay. And he had the Matrix of Leadership, and and they were trying to rise up. He was Orion Pax was part of like I think the eliteness or whatever, and he was trying to quote unquote help the worker bots rise up in a peaceful manner and, and become a, and it's basically a civil war, basically create a new a new society for trans for Cybertronians. Megatron disagreed with Eiffel Trion's like way of doing things. And I think and I, I don't know, I think in the war for Cybertron, I think Austin IDW. I'm not exactly sure on that, but Orion Pax actually gets the matrix of leadership from from uh, from Alpha Trion and it reformats him into Optimus Prime because because he becomes the last prime because Megatron kills Alpha Trion, which then makes Optimus Prime the final the last prime. And 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 that's kind of how it he then on later that's why like and the reason I'd say because think of it this way, right? Like why would Orion Pax become Optimus Prime? Well, it's the same reason why when Optimus passed on the matrix of leadership to ultra magnus ultra magnus didn't turn into a prime because he wasn't the chosen prime he was just the bearer of the matrix there's a difference between bearing the matrix and being a prime of the matrix hot rod was a prime of the matrix which in case when he got the matrix of leadership and accepted it or when he grabbed it or whatever and it was that moment that time he became rodimus prime that's the reason why that happened. Okay, I don't know. I talked about that. Just a little tangent I want to talk about there for a second, in terms of like Optimus Prime or Orion Pax becoming Optimus Prime. But I've heard some rumors that that okay, Chris Hensworth is voicing Orion Pax, but when Orion Pax gets the Matrix of Leadership from Eifer Trion and he becomes formatted into Optimus Prime, his voice is going to change to Peter Cullen. Now, from my understanding, Chris Hensworth actually uh, did some uh, voice acting work or like like test training, whatever you want to call it, uh, with Peter Cullen on how to get the voice of like how how Peter Cullen would do Orion Pax. Now, Orion, he, he, how like a younger version of him, you know. So, so that's why like so so the mannerisms are kind of the same. Like, and you kind of notice it here, like when he says like to all like the little the cheesy lines and like you kind of hear. You can kind of hear some of the. Uh, th- this is this is an Optimus Prime who hasn't been through war yet. He hasn't lost anybody yet. He's carefree. He's happy. He's just like there's a world out there. Let's go explore. Why don't you, let's just go do this? He's very naive, and it's when his brother. I don't know if they're gonna actually be brothers or anything, but his brother in arms or his best friend, you could say, betrays him, becomes Megatron, and does all these terrible things, and maybe even killing Alita One. I can see Alita One getting killed in this, you know, and that is the first indication of, of. I'm just I'm really curious because I feel like, I feel like what's gonna happen in this film, the first like I said, the first act is gonna be all goofy and silly, and then we're gonna go into the second act where they're gonna go on the trip, they're gonna go on the like the tr- the surface of Cybertron, and that's where they're gonna find Alpha Trion, and they're gonna get the they're gonna get the T T T Cogs. And give them the ability to tra- unlock their potential to transform. All Cybertronians can transform, but worker bots cannot transform because they don't need to transform. And that is when they get the potential where they can now transform. And then I and then the high elite is like, you can't, no, 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 no. And so then like kind of a little fight turns out. Then you have the, the Quintessons, it looks like, or like an early race, early race of the Quintessons maybe show up. And uh, I feel like the third act is going to be like them fighting, like, you know, trying to like, for, like, whatever, like do the thing. And that's when the movie might get a little bit more serious. Like they learn to transform, they start fighting and doing all that stuff. And I feel like when we go into the final act of the film, when we get into the, we get to the, to the, the third act of the film, 
and we start diving into things, I think what's going to happen is, like, we're going to get this moment. I feel like we're going to have this moment where Ifatron is going to tell Orion Pax that he has to choose. That he's seen his destiny, and he just needs to accept it. And Megatron, who has seen the horrors of what Cybertronian society is, like the current society is, and he wants to destroy it. He wants to rip it all apart, right? And Optimus says, no, we can't do this. And you have this moment where the where, where probably, I would say Megatron is probably going to do it, where he turns on, on Orion Pack saying, well, kind of like, kind of like with Anakin when it came to Obi-Wan. It's like, if you're not with me, then you're against me. Like his, like his, his, ideolo his, his ideological ideal of what the perfect society is for Cybertron, Cybertrons and Cybertron itself. And Orion Pax isn't, isn't going to deal with these. Like, this is wrong. We shouldn't do this. And, and probably to prove a point, he kills Alpha, Tr Alpha Trion. He kills Alpha Trion. And Alpha Trion's dying in breath. He takes Optimus's hand and tells him that you can bring them back together. You can save Megatron. Because think of it this way. Optimus would have ended the war a long time ago if he had just killed Megatron. Think about this for a second. Take it in for a moment. Let it breathe it in. If Optimus Prime had just murdered Oct murdered Megatron, I almost said Optimus Prime murdered Optimus Prime. If he just did that, problem solved. The problem would have been solved. We wouldn't have gone through decades, centuries of war to the point where they, they depleted the planet and dried Cybertron up of all its energon, and then they had to leave Cybertron to find other sources of energon, which caused them to crash land on Earth 65 million years ago during the Dinosaur Age, and then lay dormant to like the 1980s, where they were awakened, and then we get G1, basically, all the way to the year 2005, when they fight Unicron in space. Think about that for a second. Like, I suspect this movie, in terms of our timeline as humans, this movie probably takes place when Earth was probably, like, just barely a planet. Like, like it was just, like, not even probably even formed yet. Think about that for a second. Okay? We know in G1, our, the Transformers landed on Earth in 65 billion years during the Dinosaur Age. We know that from G1. Okay? But they had been fighting already for centuries before that. Okay? So it's crazy to think about how long ago, the, how long it's been. They've been fighting, like, we're talking, like, way before dinosaurs. Like, long time ago. Long time ago. But I think there's a reason why Optimus Prime never killed Megatron. It's because Alpha Trion told him, you can save him. You can save all... It's going to be cheesy. I get it. It's cheesy. It's like, guy, you can save them. You can save all of them. And uh, Alpha and uh, uh, Orion Pax is going to go... How? I don't know how to do this. I'm not ready. I, I'm not ready. Because remember, he always says that he, was, he wasn't worthy, right? And Alpha Tron's like, with this. And he's going to open up his chest, and inside is going to be the Matrix of Leadership. And he's going to, and he's going to take it out, and he's going to hand it to, uh, or to all Orion Pax. And, he's gonna, and just as Orion Pax takes it, he's going to tell him, this is the Matrix. So, and it might even not even tell him it's a Matrix of Leadership, but he's just going to be like, whoa, what is this? And he's just like, take this and become the leader of the Autobots. He might even like become the leader, right? And then just as Orion Pax is about to take it, Alpha Trion goes until all are one. And then when he takes the Matrix, it starts to do like, basically like the scene from the Transformers, the movie. And Orion Pax is going to stand up and it's gonna have maybe we might we might even get a voice from even like Primus or something saying arise Optimus Prime, and, and he's gonna reformat and become Optimus Prime, and, and and everybody's gonna be like holy crap, and and then in the final fight the final battle is gonna be Optimus Prime versus D sixteen who's slowly turning into Megatron, and at the end of the fight it's gonna be like a stalemate where Optimus Prime is gonna be like where he could kill Megatron. But he doesn't do it. And he holds out his hand and and Megatron like slaps his hand away or something and goes, No. And he's like, please, D16, please. And he's gonna say, No. 
call me Megatron. D16 is dead. And the movie's gonna end. The movie will end. Kind of like we're like with I I I feel like the movie will end like that with the Civil War starting. And I think that's why this movie's called Transformers What? Because what is the one thing that they say in almost all the Transformer lore? Until all are one. Transformers what? So I think this story, this film is gonna is gonna emphasize on the brotherhood, the friendship of Orion Pax and D16 and their history together and the very beginning of their of them separating and becoming Octopus Prime, the burden of being the leader of the Autobots and Megatron being the leader of the Decepticons. And I feel like there'll, there'll probably be a post credit scene and the post credit scene will probably I don't know, it will it will say like something like um, you know, where he will like arise and like like that's where I think I think like that's where Soundwave and like because there's a shot in here that when it went when I saw it I, I like I lost half the trailer because I was so blown away. It was right okay so there's a scene here where it looks like there's a whole bunch of seekers like okay there's Black Arachnia which kind of threw me off because like she's okay right here okay there's a shot here we've got basically classic Starscream. We've got we got Shockwave, which again is classic Shockwave with the giant chest and all that. And then we got classic Soundwave with the with the tape deck and, and everything. And there's a throne. I feel like this is the end of the movie. This is where 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 you know Megatron like like where Starscream welcomes Megatron into the Decepticons, you know, because he's the leader. And then Megatron swaps him away and says, "No, I'm the leader." And now we'll kind of like then give us a little preview of the uh, of the hatred, love, hate, the love, hate relationship that Starscream and Megatron have. I feel like that's how that will start. And I don't know, guys, I'm just kind of rambling on here. I'm just kind of like, like you call it fan fiction, I guess. That's but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to call it here. If that's what if if it, if that's what happens in the movie, if, if Alphatron gets killed by Megatron and then in his dying wish gives Optimus the Matrix which turns Optimus into Optimus Prime, and, and, and we get the line, until all are one, by Peter Cullen. You always come back to this video, and you give me a like, and you say, Professor Prime, how did you know the ending of this movie? It's like so predictable, like that every single live action animated whatever movie has the same plot and the same predictable. I, I'm just kidding, guys. I think this movie's going to be really fun. The humor, I think, for a lot of people might be, be off, just because we're so used to like a very war veteran serious Optimus Prime, like you know, that Peter Cullen strong voice, and then that really dark and sinister uh Frank Walker, Frank Walken, sorry, uh Megatron voice, or even even all the other people who have voiced Megatron over the years, they all imitate him. Just like uh, they all imitate both of them. Like every single iteration of, of those characters. That were not voiced. Because, like, here's the thing. I think Armada wasn't voiced by them. I think Transformers Robots in Disguise wasn't. Uh, I think Earth Spark wasn't. Uh, I, uh, definitely War for Cybertron wasn't because they got an all generic voice cast for that one. And then, hell, even Frank Walker didn't even voice Megatron in the first live action film. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think he did. I don't think he even voiced him until the second one. I think he definitely did. I think in the second one he did, but not in the first one. So, I'm just saying, guys. Like, like we're so used, we're we're so used to these certain voice actors and their tone and the way they deliver lines. And now we have people like Chris Hensworth, Brian Lee Henry, Scarlett Johansson playing Alita One. That that was pretty good, actually. I I, I almost didn't really recognize her. Uh, Brian Lee, uh, I don't know, because like he doesn't really have that sinister voice that Megatron has, but we'll see. Now here's the thing. I heard the rumor that Frank Walker, uh, not Frank Walker, well, yeah, Frank Walker, but that Peter Cullen was going to voice when he becomes Optimus Prime, which is weird because you think that it would just, you just keep Chris Hensworth. Because at the end of this film, if you turn Optimus, if you turn Orion Pax into Optimus Prime at the end of this film, and then you make a sequel, that means Peter Cullen's coming back to voice Optimus Prime. I, I thought the, now I would be okay. And I think it'd be really cool if they had Peter Cullen voice Optimus Prime, but like not voice him. Like here, here, here's like here's the scene. Let me set the scene for you. 
he set the scene for you here. Brian Pax gets the Matrix as he's holding it, and he starts getting converted and, and reformatted into Optimus Prime. You hear the voice arise Optimus Prime, but it's Peter Collins' voice. And, and maybe we don't know who it is. Maybe later on we would find out that it's Primus, you know, from the planet, right? Because Cybertron is Primus. Depending on the lore, depending on what continuity you go with. And then afterwards, it's it's Chris Hensworth doing his version of Optimus Prime. Because he did get voice, I think, voice acting. Voice, voice acting, what do you call it? He, he uh, tips, there we go, voice acting tips. He got voice acting tips for Optimus Prime from Peter Cullen himself. So he's like, hey, how do you, should I do this? Like, like, give me some feedback. How should I do this? Here, here's the lines. How would you do it? So he got tips on how to make it sound like him, but not him. So I think it'd be a disservice to Chris Hensworth to have him do this role only to replace him with Peter Cullen afterwards. If you're going to do that, you might as well just have Peter Cullen voice it the entire time. So I think the rumors of Peter Cullen being in the movie playing Optimus Prime, when he, I think that's, I think it's more of, him voicing the maybe the future voice of Optimus Prime in Orion Pax's mind when he becomes Optimus Prime. And then when we hear him talk afterwards, it's Chris Hensworth doing, I don't want to say an imitation of Peter Cullen, but doing his version of Optimus Prime, which is then an imitation that every other Optimus Prime voice actor has done of Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. So I guess what I'm saying. But yeah, guys, one thing that I did not do with rise of the beast and i and i i feel so so like disheartened that i didn't do this that i didn't do a series i didn't like you know do like hey we're gonna do a series of lead up and like talk about some news talk about things that i'm excited about like the toys uh tie-in comics you know just merchandise like there's a popcorn bucket that's been leaked already i think you can actually or at one point you could order pre-order the studio series uh octus prime figure you know, we already know what it's going to look like and all that kind of crazy stuff. And I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, you know, it looks like I'm probably going to get it. I'm probably going to I'm definitely going to get Optimus Megatron and Lita One and Bumblebee. Those are the ones I'm at least going to get. If they release Soundwaves, uh, Shockwave, you know, Starscream, uh, Chromia, if they release any of the other ones, and, and like I might get them too. You know, and I'll have to find another spot in my, my man house cave here to display them. And I'll definitely do like, you know, like my 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 way of doing reviews, which don't ignore all that in the background. I've been behind so, so much behind. So behind, guys. You have no idea. But yeah, guys, that's that's my take on Transformers 1. That's my reaction and my thoughts and my rambling and what I think is gonna happen. And let me know in the comments down below what you think. And if you really enjoyed watching this video, check out this video right up here for more. And as always, guys, until next time.